Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we are talking about hyphens. I had a project where our book was extremely long and we had a very good editor who wanted to make sure that all of the hyphenations in the book were proper and weren't breaking at the wrong point in the document. Let me explain. So here is a whole bunch of body copy which has been left justified. As we can see, we have quite a bit of hyphenation going on here on the edge of this page. I have highlighted some of these in red. Now, when hyphenation happens naturally, InDesign just makes a decision. It says, well, this is where this word needs to break in the middle. This is called a swung dash, where it breaks it in the middle of the word. This is not a character that I have applied. This is a character that InDesign has applied in order to break the word. However, InDesign is not aware of how hyphens are supposed to break in proper English rules. You want to break that word at the syllable. So let's go back up to our list here at the top, our big words. In some instances, you might have a compound word in which you want that hyphen to break at the actual written hyphen. Other words like fiction or pumpkin or cactus are going to break at those natural syllable breaks. So fiction would break right here at this spot. What does a tilde mean? A tilde is how we tell InDesign where to break a word. For example, let's go to our hyphenation settings in InDesign. So let's go up to edit. Spelling, user dictionary. The user dictionary is how we tell InDesign um, where we can add words to the dictionary. Um, say you were writing a book with a character who had a fake name, you could add that word to the user dictionary. This is also the place where we can manually override our hyphenation settings. We can see I have quite a few going on in my user dictionary. Um, lots and lots and lots and lots of them. These are all of the manual hyphen breaks I have added over the years. Now, how do we use this? First of all, let's look at our target. The target uh, can either be the user dictionary, which is every document I ever touch with InDesign, or it can be just this one document that I'm working on. I typically use the user dictionary unless it's a very specific and weird setting I'm using. Um, so let's look at this now. Because I have this tilde highlighted in my document, InDesign is assuming that I would like to hyphenate that tilde, which is not the case. It will always bring in whatever highlighted word you have in your document. Let's say I wanted to hyphenate rock hard. Now, how would I indicate to InDesign that I want it to break only at that manual hyphen? This is where we add in that tilde. The tilde tells in design that this is where I want you to break, only in this spot. When I click Add, now Rock Hard is added to my very long list here. And either this word must remain all on one line or must only break at this point. It is not allowed to add a hyphen at any other location. Now what about words that have multiple syllables in them, like serenade? Serenade is a three-syllable word. We have ser in eight, three parts. We want InDesign to only break at each of those syllable breaks. So we can add a tilde here on the first syllable. Now what do we do with the second one? We add a double tilde. This is telling InDesign that I prefer you to break first here at this first tilde. And this is my second choice for you to break at the second tilde. When I click add, great. Now serenade is allowed to break at those syllable points and only those syllable points. What if you have a very, very long book or a specific list of hyphens that you need to add? For example, in the book project I was talking about, our editor came to us with a long list of words that she had gone ahead and hyphenated properly. So she sent me a list that looked very much like this. She brought me 
Pumpkin, cactus, serenade. So this is the list that the editor brought me, and she wanted these words to break only at these particular points indicated by the tildes. While I was at it, I figured I should probably check the rest of the book, too. So luckily, there is a great little tool by Peter Carell who can help us do this. I'll show you. Um, this is this is the URL for this page. This page explains how we will use this set of scripts. There's two scripts. Um, there is one that will collect all of the hyphenated words and another one that will help us apply those hyphenated words to our user dictionary. First, let's go back to our document and look again at my left justified body text. We've got a couple of words here that are incorrectly hyphenated as indicated by my red text. Dredges should break at the natural syllable break, which is dredges. We have red-handed, which is a naturally, uh, is a manually hyphenated word, and it should only break at that manual hyphen, or not at all. So this one needs to be fixed as well. Um, here's serenade, which looks to be breaking at the proper point. And I think I have a couple others in here too. Oh yeah, world famous, pumpkin, these ones were breaking at one point. So I need to get InDesign to collect every instance of a hyphenated word in my whole entire document. Now, before I run this script, if you're not sure what a script is, if you don't know how it works or how to install one, check out this video right here. Scripts are not scary. They're just an additional function you can add to InDesign, pre-programmed by somebody else much smarter than myself, and allows you to do things with InDesign that you normally would not have access to. A lot of scripts are free. Some are paid for. Uh, Peter Cowrell and um, Kasayan are two very well-known and design script coders, and the majority of their scripts are free. Thank you very much, you two. Let's navigate to our scripts panel. If you can't find it, go up to Window, Utilities, Scripts. I'm going to now run my hyphen git list script. I'm making sure I'm clicked onto my story right here, my one big text box, and I'm going to run the script. You can tell the script to uh, run either on the whole document or just the story. I want it to run just on the one text box I'm selecting right now, so I'm going to leave that as is. Um, output. This is where it's going to put all of the. It's good. This is where it's going to put the list of hyphenated words. So I want it to make a new document for me. A swung dash. This is what I was talking about. A InDesign added hyphen. It's not a character. It's just there to indicate that your word has break in it. Um, you could set this to hyphen if you wanted to, if you wanted to add settings for every compound word, um, but I'm just going to leave it at swung dash for now. You can tell the script to alphabetize your list if you would like. I'm going to go ahead and let it do that. And you can set multiple columns for your output document in order to fit more words on one page, a less page heavy document. Um, you can also tell it to delete duplicates if it finds more than one instance of a word so you don't have to go through multiple ones. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And here is the document that it has created for me. Now these are some of my lorem ipsum words. I don't really need those. I'm just going to get rid of them. All right, so these are the words that InDesign has said have been hyphenated. It has gone ahead and indicated where that swung dash was with the tilde. I'm going to move that over to dredges right here at the syllable break. Red-handed, I'm going to swap that tilde over to the manual hyphen. And then sunflower is actually broken at the correct spot, so I'm going to leave that as is. Now what do we do with this list here? We're going to go back to our scripts list, and we're going to tell InDesign to run this script now, the second one in the set. This is called hyphens apply. Uh, yes, we want to do English, that's fine. Looks like nothing happened. But let's go back to our user dictionary. And let's look in the D section for dredges. There it is. So dredges has been automatically added into our user dictionary. 
Let's look for red handed. And there's red handed. Excellent. So all of our words have been now added to our user dictionary. And when we go back to our other document, we should see an update in how the text is handled. Now, sometimes you will not see things update right away until you relaunch InDesign. If you need to force it to update, like red handed here is not breaking in the correct spot, we're going to go to edit, spelling, user dictionary. And when I add red handed to this particular document, it will go ahead and update it. Um, you would see this update if you relaunched InDesign uh, and reloaded those user dictionary settings. But for now, I can force it to update by switching the target to specifically this document and adding the word. A um, couple other notes about this script. So let's say I was only wanting to find um, or add compound words to this list. Let's do a couple other ones like blue, collar, and tight. All right, so let's say that that script generated a list like this for us, but maybe I'm only interested in adding in the compound words like blue collar that has a hyphen in it and free spirited that has a hyphen in it. I'm going to remove all of these other words in the list. We can do this by using a nice little grep line that's very helpful. Bring that over here. This is our grep. We're in the grep tab right here. I can't exactly remember what all of this means, but I think this indicates the beginning of a line and then it tells it to look for whatever you would like in the line, in this case, a hyphen, um, which is contained in here with this caret with a plus sign. Um, and then I believe this indicates through the end of the line. So what should happen here is when, when I run this, it should look for every instance of a line that does not contain a hyphen. Yeah, it should skip everything. So I want to change all of those to nothing, to change all. Now I'm going to look for instances of double carriage returns and change those to just one carriage return, change all, change all again, change all again. Should get rid of most of those. All right, now we are down to just our compound words. What we are going to do is look for every instance of a tilde, change it to nothing. And then we are going to look for every instance of a hyphen. And we're going to change that to a hyphen tilde. Very good. Now, this is the only place that these compound words are allowed to break. And all we need to do is simply run the second half of that script again in order to add them to our user dictionary. I'm going to go ahead and run that. Very good. Now these should be popped into my user dictionary. And the next time I relaunch InDesign, it should be handling these words perfectly in every instance of the body copy. All right, everybody. I hope you found this helpful. If it was, leave a like, leave a comment, click on another video. That seems to really help out the algorithms, lets YouTube know that our videos are worth caring about. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.